Most people do the same few exercises over and over again, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it can make your workouts feel stale. So today, I'm gonna share seven exercises that you've probably never heard of. They aren't gimmicky optimal tricks either. These are time-tested movements with scientific support that I personally do every week, and I think you should too. We'll start with a few that are a bit more common, and then as we go, they'll get more and more obscure. So I'd say most of you probably have done exercise one at some point, but I'd bet less than 1% of you have ever even seen exercise seven. I think they're all worth doing. Just remember that training hard and training consistently matters more than the exact exercises you pick. Okay, the first exercise is a simple way to improve your shoulder health, grow your forearms, increase core strength, decompress your spine, and improve muscular endurance. It's a dead hang. And if you've never tested your max dead hang time, try it out next time you go to the gym. I actually just tested my own max time after coaching my friend Mejd in a Mr. Beast challenge where he'd win $1,000 for every second he could dead hang. Every second you can hang, I will give you $1,000. Get out of here. He started with a max dead hang time of just six seconds and we got him up to 60 seconds in just 30 days, meaning he won 60 grand for that challenge. And I just tested it myself and my max time was... <laughs> Okay, two minutes and 45 seconds. Is that right? Because it really didn't feel that long. Now, for some context, this is what a beginner, intermediate, advanced, elite, and world-class dead hang time looks like. And this is the dead hang world record. So I'm advanced, not quite elite. Dead hangs can open up the shoulder joint, allowing the tendons and muscles of the rotator cuff to move more freely, which can help with shoulder pain. And if your back is feeling stiff from sitting all day, you'll get some spinal decompression too. The scientific evidence on this is a bit more mixed, but I personally get a lot of relief from it, especially in the days following heavy squats or deadlifts. First, chalk your hands and buy some cheap liquid chalk if your gym doesn't have any. Trust me, this will make a huge difference. Use a bench if you can't reach the bar and grip it just outside shoulder width. This will seem counterintuitive, but try to take a looser grip initially so your forearms don't fatigue too quickly. Once you start to slip, start gripping harder. This is kind of like pacing yourself in a race. Now, if you're doing these for max time, brace your core, but don't flex so hard that you tire yourself out. If you're doing them for spinal decompression, start with a braced core and then gradually let your hips sink down and stretch out. Your legs should hang straight down and I find keeping my feet together and pointing my toes down helps keep me from swinging. From there, just focus on keeping a consistent breathing rhythm and don't try to hold your breath. Try it out and see how long you can hang. If you can't dead hang with body weight yet, use a band for assistance by looping it around the bar and stepping into it or you can use an assisted pull-up machine. If you can beat my time of two minutes and 45 seconds, post it on Instagram and use the hashtag Jeff Nipper Dead Hang. I'll take a look at all of them and I'll repost some of you. Next exercise takes a standard dumbbell curl and makes it just a little more effective, at least in theory. I call it the Zotman Hammer Curl, named after 1800 strongman, George Zotman. I just modified it a bit. Here's the idea. With a regular curl, maybe you can lift 20 pounds on the way up, but you could easily control 40 pounds on the way back down. That's because you're about 40 or 50% stronger on the negative than you are on the positive. So with a standard dumbbell curl, you're always overloading the positive more than the negative. The negative never gets fully challenged, but since the negative is crucial for muscle growth, I think it makes a lot of sense to overload it to its full potential. One way to do that is to curl the weight up on your own and then have a partner apply extra resistance on the negative, but that feels awkward. So instead, what you can do is use simple biomechanics to make the weight effectively heavier on the negative. Here's what you do. Curl the weight up with a hammer grip and then lower the weight back down with a palms up supinated grip. By using a hammer grip on the positive, your brachialis and brachioradialis can come in and help out. And then when you switch to the supinated grip on the negative, your biceps are forced to take the load. For technique, grip the dumbbell in the middle of the handle. So don't let your thumb rest up against the head of the dumbbell and curl the weight up, stopping just before your arm is vertical. Then rotate your palms up and lower the weight back down under control, sweeping the weight out in a wide arc. Once you reach the bottom, rotate your palms back into the hammer grip, curl the weight back up again, and repeat. I usually do these for eight to 10 reps. And while I don't think this technique will put inches on your arms compared to standard dumbbell curls, 
I do think it's an effective variation that makes a lot of biomechanical sense. Now, if you prefer old school dumbbell curls, they'll still work great. Just slow down the negative to even out the strength curve. Okay, so far we've only hit dead hangs and Zotman hammer curls. The next five are definitely more obscure. Okay, this next exercise I've been doing every week all year and I absolutely love it for the side delts. It takes a standard dumbbell lateral raise and makes it feel a lot better, at least for me. It's the incline dumbbell Y raise. Now I've covered the tension profile of the standard dumbbell lateral raise before, but here's a quick refresher. Because gravity pulls straight down, there's zero tension on your delts at the bottom and peak tension doesn't hit until the very top. Now that's not necessarily a problem. In fact, new research shows that dumbbell laterals can still grow your side delts just fine as long as you train them hard. But I still don't like having such a lopsided tension profile. I find it harder to connect with my side delts when I'm only getting enough tension in such a small aspect of the range of motion. So that's where the incline dumbbell Y raise comes in. Set up a bench at a roughly 20 to 30 degree incline. It should feel like you're leaning pretty far back. Brace your upper back against the bench and lift your chest up. With the dumbbells at your sides, lift them up and out in a Y. Think about squeezing your side delt fibers together to move the weight up and then feel them stretch apart on the way down. Once you get to the point where the dumbbells are back at your sides, start your next rep. So don't let the dumbbells swing all the way back until they're hanging vertically, because again, you'll lose that tension. So stop once you get to your sides, just like you would when standing. And by lifting the dumbbells up and out in a Y, you'll hit the fibers in between the front and side heads, which adds a lot of shape to your shoulders, especially from the front. And while lifting straight out to the side is generally safe, a lot of people do find that their shoulders feel more comfortable when they lift in the scapular plane about 30 degrees to the front. So give them a shot the next time you hit shoulders. I think you'll love the feel of them. Okay, now we're getting a little bit more obscure. So I don't think I've seen many people do this one outside of my audience. It's the sideways facing one arm rear delt fly on the pec deck machine. First, I should explain why it is that I like them so much. It's really because this is the only way to get a full range of motion for your rear delts on this machine. When you do them the traditional way, what you're really doing are half reps in a shortened position. The muscle never gets lengthened at all. It'd be like doing bicep curls in the top half only. Nobody would consider that optimal, yet that's exactly how most people treat the reverse pec deck. The rear delts don't get anywhere close to a stretched position until you reach across your body. So that's why I do them this way. The technique is pretty simple too. Instead of sitting down and facing the pad as normal, you turn sideways and sweep your arm out across your body. A cue I picked up from Dr. Mike is to think about there being a big pile of money on the ground and however much area you can cover is how much money you get to keep. This will help you sweep the weight out with your rear delts rather than yanking the weight back with your back and biceps. Obviously you don't need to go all the way around. Now, if you don't have a pec deck machine, you can still get the job done with cables. Just make sure that you still reach your arms across your body for the full rear delt stretch. And if you only have dumbbells, all you need to do is lie down on a bench, stretch the dumbbell across your body and lift it back up. It's not that I think this super deep stretch is gonna suddenly double your gains, but I do think that if you're completely missing the stretched aspect on all your rear delt work, you probably are leaving some gains on the table. So try these out, let me know what you think. All right, let's go even deeper. The next few exercises on here do get a little wild, but like I said, I do all seven of them and I think they're all super underrated. Okay, next one is a pretty uncommon ab exercise that I've been doing every week on my cut so far, dragon flags. It is a classic though, and it was actually Bruce Lee's go-to move for building up his incredible core strength. They'll hit your lower abs the hardest since you're lifting your legs up, but your entire six pack has to contract isometrically to keep your spine extended. Actually, the first time I did these, my upper abs were so sore, I was still sore, I think five or six days after I hit them. So don't say I didn't warn you. On top of that, your obliques come in for stability and your serratus muscles anchor your back and shoulders in place. You also get some lat activation here and man, it just lights your entire core up. For the technique, grab onto the top of a bench and with straight hips and straight knees, lift your entire body, including your glutes, up off the bench until your legs are at a roughly 60 to 80 degree angle. Then while keeping your hips straight, lower your legs back down under control and repeat that for four to eight reps or however many you can get. Now, fair warning, this one is a lot harder than it looks. So if you're new to it, I'd start with lying leg raises. Just lie flat on your back and lift your legs up while bracing your core. Once you can do that for eight to 10 reps, move on to a bent knee dragon flag. This is quite a lot easier than the full dragon flag. Bending your knees shortens the lever arm, which makes it a lot easier on your abs. 
Once you hit eight to 10 reps of those, you should be ready to ease into full-blown dragon flags. I've been doing these more than hanging leg raises lately because with hanging leg raises, you don't have anything to stabilize your torso. And so it's tricky to avoid swinging back and forth. That instability then limits the tension that you can direct into your abs. A Roman chair fixes most of this, but your back, arms, and shoulders still have to hold your body weight up. A dragon flag solves those issues. But honestly, when it comes to abs, the most important thing is your diet. You'll need to get down to around 10 to 12% body fat as a male and around 20% as a female. So before we get to exercise six and seven, let me quickly show you how to get from 20% to 10% like I did this year using my smart nutrition app, Macro Factor. All you need to do is download a free trial on the App Store or Google Play, and then the app will take you through a quick series of questions to learn about you, your goals, and your nutritional preferences. Then our metabolic rate equations will use that info from your questionnaire to get a picture of your specific metabolism right away and set up a nutrition plan specifically for you. From there, all you need to do is log your weight and track what you eat. And then each week going forward, the app will do a full check-in with you just like a coach would. So it'll update your nutrition based on any changes to your metabolism every week. Then it'll tell you exactly how much weight you've lost and how much weight you have left to lose to get to your goal body fat. I've been using the app to run my own cut all year. And if you're ready to start yourself, I'll put a link to a free trial in the description box below, or you can scan this QR code on screen. Just make sure you use code Jeff when you download and that'll get you two weeks for free. Okay, this next one is one of the most underrated back builders out there. And most people have probably never heard of it. It's called the Kelso Shrub. And it's amazing for back thickness because it completely isolates your mid traps and rhomboids without fatiguing your lower back or involving your biceps. Now, despite the name, it really is more like a row than a shrub. With a standard row, you bend your elbows and squeeze your back together at the same time. But with the Kelso Shrub, your elbows stay locked and you completely isolate the back squeeze. That's what makes it so effective. When you think about it, during a row, all of this motion at your arms isn't doing anything for your back. This part is all biceps. Research shows that while rows do grow your biceps to some extent, curls grow them about twice as well. And since your biceps are obviously much smaller than your back, they will eventually limit the amount of tension that your back gets on a row. That's why after you hit failure on a normal row, you could probably crank out another four or five Kelso shrugs. That should tell you that your biceps may have hit failure, your rear delts may have hit failure, but your mid back probably didn't. So for the Kelso technique, load up a chest supported T-bar row machine, brace your chest against the pad and take a fairly wide grip around 1.5 times shoulder width. Unrack the weight and with completely locked arms, squeeze your shoulder blades together as hard as you can. Pause for about one second at the top and then let your shoulder blades peel apart on the negative. If you're doing it right, the weight should only move about four or five inches. This may not feel like enough at first, but that's because you're used to doing rows where most of the range of motion is coming from the biceps and the lats. But when you actually isolate the mid back, this is what the full range of motion looks like. Now, of course, I still think rows are a fantastic overall back developer, but if I'm trying to isolate mid back thickness specifically, Kelso shrugs are one of my main go-tos. And by the way, if you don't have a T-bar row machine, you can do the same basic thing by bracing against an incline bench and using dumbbells. All right, let's finish with the least known exercise on my list. This is the seated cable deadlift. I think this is an awesome glute and hamstring exercise, and I have no idea why more people don't do it. I know it looks gimmicky, but hear me out. Obviously, barbell deadlifts are great for building total body strength, and I personally do barbell Romanian deadlifts every single week. But sometimes you need an exercise that activates your glutes and hams without the same fatigue demand that comes with a heavy barbell lift. That's where the seated cable deadlift comes in. Because your hips are fixed with your glutes planted on the bench, you're a lot more stable, and you won't fry your back, core, and quads nearly as much. If you do them right, you'll get a glute pump like you've never felt before. Okay, for technique on these, take a grip just outside shoulder width and plant your feet on the platform with your toes pointed slightly out to engage the glutes. While keeping a tall chest, squat the weight up and then extend your hips to a full body lockout position. This is where your glutes should stay planted throughout the set. From there, begin your first rep by unlocking your hips and knees, lowering the bar while keeping it in as tight to your body as feels comfortable. You can actually go quite a bit lower here though, since there aren't any plates to limit your range of motion. So go as low as you can without allowing your lower back to round. For me, that's right around my ankles. From there, squeeze your glutes hard to extend your hips, keep your shoulders back and your chest up as you complete the lockout. 
Remember, this isn't a row, it's a deadlift. So you shouldn't be yanking with your arms. Use your glutes to move the weight. I find a big glute squeeze at the very top of each rep can help you feel your glutes working better. You could also do these as Romanian deadlifts by keeping a straighter knee for more hamstrings emphasis. Doing them single leg works great too, because you don't need to worry about keeping your balance like you do with free weights. This way, if you have any left to right imbalances, you can even things out by starting with your weaker side, going to or close to failure, and then matching the reps with a stronger side after. Now, I don't think these are better than barbell deadlifts, but I do think they're easier to recover from. And honestly, because I'm more stable here, I'm able to connect with my glutes and hamstrings a lot better. So try them out for yourself and let me know what you think. And if you haven't already, download a free trial of Macro Factor. It's the smart nutrition app that I've developed over the last several years, and it's the app that I use myself to run my own cut. We built in a ton of features to save you time, like barcode scanning, multi-food plate logging, and even a new AI photo feature that estimates your macros just from a picture. And if the amounts ever aren't perfect, you can quickly adjust them, which is still way faster than logging every ingredient manually one at a time. We've got over 350,000 users, an amazing supportive online community to help you reach your goals, and great app reviews all over the internet. So if you're looking to take your nutrition to the next level, download the app. Like I said, it's a free trial. I'll put a link to that in the description box down below. And that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all here in the next one.